Welcome back. Today I will recap episodes 7 and 8 of the 2019 French horror streaming television series named Marion. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. Episode 7 of Marion begins on February 17, 1617, on a Tuesday, with a priest venturing inside Marion's tomb to burn her and the contract she made with the devil. However, before he could burn it completely, Marion's corpse begins moving, and she suddenly gets up, and then a demon appears in front of him, due to which the priest gets terrified and comes out of the grave. Father asks him if has it burned to which he lies and says yes. Back in the present inside the lighthouse, the four friends are still reeling over Ronan's death. Suddenly his body moves and starts hovering, seeing that they all get terrified. He then levitates in the air with his mouth wide open, and as they see Marion coming out of him, they run away from there. The group tries escaping the island but stops seeing the priest's possessed dog there standing in front of them and growling. They try to run away when the dog starts chasing them and all of them get separated. Emma gets into Ronan's car and the dog disappears, but suddenly appears sitting on the bonnet of her car. She finds a gun in the car, but the dog disappears again. However, when she leaves the car to go inside the building, she stops hearing dog growling. She turns back and finds the dog standing on Ronan's car staring and growling at her, and as he tries to attack her, she shoots him. We then switch to Sebi and Aurora who run inside the school, where they see Lucy's favorite toy inside a classroom. It says one of them will die, and as they hide under a table, the toy tells Sebi that his child is simply delicious. They then hear his child crying, and Aura tells him to don't listen as it's not true. They plug in earphones, and as Aura plays the music, the toy gets quiet, but only then does Sebi notice Lucy picking up her doll. She then pulls on their earphones and begins giggling, and Aura says it's her. Lucy then suddenly appears there, and asks her if she can come with her. Aura says no, saying it's not you, to which Lucy says she's saying this because she doesn't remember her. She then tells Sebi that if Emma writes before Tuesday, he will find his baby. Sebi asks her where is he, to which she says very close and she just played with him. Aura tries to explain to him that she is lying, to which Lucy says Emma is lying and why does she always defend her. She then reveals to Aura that Emma was there when she hit. Aura doesn't believe her, but she says she was there, but she left her to suffocate and choke. Sebi asks Aura why she is doing this, to which she says for fun, due to which they get terrified, and then Emma comes there and points the gun at them. She asks them is any of them Marion, as she can't lie about her name. They say no, and Emma puts the gun down, and Sebi asks her if she is Marion. Emma says no, and when Aura asks her if she killed the dog, she says no. Meanwhile, we see Arnaud at the beach, where he sees his brother Tonio, who says he came to warn him. Arnaud asks him if he lost him, to which he says he is not dead but a prisoner, pointing at the sea. He also explains that the only way to free him is for Emma to write, and if she refuses, Marion will take Aura next. Arnaud then returns to the school, and Emma asks him if he is Marion, to which he says no. After a while, the thermostat bulb there lights up, indicating that Marion is there now, and only then do they find Ronan writing something and then he falls, and it reads one of them for her, who will it be? Marion then suddenly moves towards Aura, due to which she gets terrified, and she asks them why only she saw her. Arnaud says she is coming for her, and then suddenly Marion throws her away. They all get scared seeing this, but Emma picks up Ronan's necklace and makes Aurora wear it. Both boys start panicking and insist that Emma start writing again, as there is no other way. Emma refuses to do as she believes they need to resist and fight instead. Only then Aura gets up and asks her where was she when Lucy locked herself in. Emma says she was there but it's not her fault. She tries to explain to her that she tried to look for her but couldn't find her. She apologizes to her, but all her friends turn against her saying people are dying because of her and it's unforgivable. Now as Emma tries to leave there, Arnaud points the gun at her and asks her if she is going to write. He says he must convince her at any cost, as he promised his brother. Emma says if he saw his brother tonight, it wasn't him, and that she won't write. She says she will fight Marion to the death, and tell him to shoot her if he wants to, but she is staying here to find a new way to hurt her. Arnaud says so the witch has to be told she will have to take him next, as he can't bear seeing her hurt them all. Suddenly the witch says so she is taking him, and then she takes him away, and seeing that Emma gets furious. Marion takes him to the top of the lighthouse, and she holds his head. Arnaud tries to tear off her mask and he sees his brother Tonio in her, but she tells him that his brother has drowned, and then she kills him. A defeated Emma returns home and writes again, causing Sebi's son to be returned to him. Later that night, Sebi visits Emma, and tells her that she returned his son. They then have a heart-to-heart -heart which leads to them making love to make up for what they never did as teens. The next day, Emma wakes up to the sound of the doorbell, and she finds that Sebi is gone already. She opens the door and finds Father Xavier there, who suddenly starts performing an exorcism on her. 
Emma gets shocked to see this, and then father knocks her down and the episode ends here. The season finale of Marion begins right where it left off, with the priest violently trying to exorcise Emma. She manages to crawl to her room, and when the priest comes there, he gets spooked to see that she was writing, and says she did what Marion wanted. Meanwhile, Emma grabs the gun and points it at him, and asks him why did he come into his house and hit her. Father says he never touched her, and it's the holy water that is hurting her. Emma notices that the blood is gone and says she doesn't understand. He then reveals that she is Marion. He wanted to help and tear her away from her, but she did what she wanted, and it's too late as it's now Tuesday. He then asks her if she is Marion, to which she says yes, because Marion cannot lie about her name. Father says burning what's left of her grave was his only hope, and asks her where is her grave. But Marion makes her shoot him. Emma gets up and says it wasn't her, to which he says he knows, and that since childhood. He has waited for this fight, but in the end, he was useless, like everyone else. Emma asks her why she chose her, to which he says don't know, but she gave her what she wanted. She needed to become stronger and have people dream of her. We then flash back to Emma as a little girl in the woods, finding a hole in the ground where Marion speaks to her for the first time. She tells her that she will dream about her often, and one day, she will wake her up. Back in the present, father tells her that they are the great-great-grandchildren of those who punished Marion, and she is only keeping her promise. Emma sees Marion in the mirror, pointing her towards a side, and Emma slowly walks out of the room. Downstairs, she finds Marion in a room who points her towards the main door, and when Emma goes there, Marion points her towards a strange shed. Emma goes there and pushes it over and discovers the same hole from her childhood. She puts her ear to the hole and Marion asks her to help her. She asks her to put her hand down, and as she does so, she reaches the witch and pulls her out of her tomb. After she comes out, Emma removes her blindfold, revealing a young lady. Emma says sorry to her as it took a long time, to which she says no need to apologize to her and then she hugs her. In an alternate reality, Emma and Marion walk along the black waters, but Emma stops and says she knows she is killing people there. Marion says death stays over there, and they don't talk of death there, as it's not their problem anymore. She says they need to see the dark man, her husband, but there are others too, kings of all who live and die. Back in the real world, at the house, Father Xavier attempts to leave the house, but he sees Marion there in the form of Emma moving towards him. He asks her not to come close to him, to which she says she is only an emissary, and others bigger and more ambitious than her await in the world's shadow at the edge of the black water. She then stabs him repeatedly, and during this, Aura arrives looking for Emma, and she finds that witch charm hanging at the door. She goes in and finds a gun at the table, and as she is about to pick it up, Emma says she is hiding and asks her to find her. Aura grabs the gun and they play an unsettling game of hide and seek where she finally finds a possessed Emma behind the curtain. Aura gets shocked to see her and realizes that she is not Emma but Marion. She points the gun towards her and tells her to leave Emma, to which she says she doesn't leave anything and begins moving towards her, and by holding a knife to her stomach, she tells her to kill Emma before she kills her. She then takes the gun from her hand, and Aura asks her if she is going to kill her, to which she says yes, but before she could kill her, Aura puts her necklace around Emma stopping her in her tracks. She throws the knife down, and meanwhile, in a different dimension, Marion asks Emma how did she let her hand go. She says she doesn't know and she got this and her friend gave it to her. Here Emma tells Aura to flee and she will deal with Marion. The scene cuts to a young father Xavier in school, detailing how he wants to be a priest in order to fight evil. In the present day, Father Xavier awakens badly injured and finds Belaeth's symbol drawn on the door with his blood. Meanwhile, Marion tells Emma to come with her to see all her friends and her mum, but Emma knows she's lying and will leave her by killing herself. Here Father Xavier crawls outside and finds Marion's grave. He pours gasoline into the grave, and as he tries to light it, demons grab his hand and pull him inside. He tries to pick up his lighter, but many demons stop him. In another dimension, Emma says she knows what she did to her friends over there, and she came to stop her. She asks her if she will sacrifice herself for them, to which she says she has done it before. Marion says she won't let her die. Meanwhile, Aura turns around and comes back to Emma's house, where she gets terrified seeing Marion holding Emma while Emma holds a gun to her own head. Back in the alternate reality, Emma has a baseball bat and she says she will hit her on the head. Here Father Xavier fights the demon and manages to pick up the lighter, and as he throws it on Marion's corpse, Emma swings the bat and pulls the trigger, but Aura rushes and tackles Emma and the gun goes off. Father Xavier sacrifices himself to kill the witch, and Emma disappears from the other dimension. We then see Emma in the hospital, where Aura asks her if she is Marion, to which she says she is no longer Marion, and then she asks her the same. Only then she asks her if she took something, as she never leaves empty-handed. Aura calms her down and says she didn't leave this time, but she is dead. Once recovered, they go to see Camille and find out that she hasn't talked since the incident. It's a psychological issue, likely temporary, 
but she will get better. Later that night, we learn that her dad is also fine now, and she tells him that she is leaving tomorrow as she has to take Camille back. He asks her if she will come back, to which she says no, and then she hugs him and says of course she will, often. In the morning, Emma takes Camille in her car, ready to go home, but before leaving, she asks her if Marion took her to the city, but a traumatized Camille remains silent. She then heads to the church and lays a rose on its stairs. After this, she visits Sebi's house and says she just wanted to say goodbye because she is leaving. They hug each other, and she says she wanted him to know that it made her feel better when he came in through her window and they made love. Sebi gets shocked and tells her to stop it, and that he never came in through the window. He never went into her room and they did nothing, and then he asked her to leave. Back in the car, Emma flashes to that night and a demon is shown acting as Sebi. Camille says hell is near the ocean, and Emma asks her did she say something to which she nods her head to know. Emma brushes it off as a dream and as she drives away, she has to stop multiple times to be sick. Camille goes to a chemist to give her a pregnancy test, but Emma says she can't be pregnant as she hasn't done anything in weeks and it's just her stomach is upset. Later that evening, Emma stops by to take the test and shockingly sees that it is positive and the season ends here. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.